1999, I was the captain on a 747 charter from here, the Muslim Pilgrims, they're called Hajis. And I, the flight engineer and the first officer were American men, and all of the flight attendants were young Indonesian women. We were 35,000 feet over the Indian Ocean when a flight attendant rushed into the cockpit and said, Captain, purser in toilet, screaming. What do you mean, screaming? He's saying, ooh, 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 very loud. <laughs> I sent the flight engineer down to find out what the hell was happening. A moment later, another flight attendant rushed into the cockpit. Captain, doctor informs you man has died. I thank her for the fact that the notification required. I went about thinking what's happening with the person. But Captain, we cannot get dead Haji out of seat. He's very big. He's stuck. Person not help. He in toilet with flight engineer. <laughs> I thought, well, have the doctor help you. But Captain, doctor is Haji also. Haji's not allowed to touch dead people. So I sent the first officer down to dislodge the guy. That left me alone in the cockpit. Then nature called. No problem. The toilet, the upper deck toilet, was just beyond the cockpit door, which I left open so that I would be able to hear any alarms as I sat on the toilet. I hurried my business as best I could. However, I forgot one thing, that on Hodge flights, there is no toilet paper in the toilets. You see, the, the Hodges would never have even seen a Western toilet, much less used it. Their toilet is a hole in the floor, a mom, and they squat on it, and they use their left hands with water to clean things up, and, and, and so forth. Well, anyway, so what the way they use an airplane toilet is they stand on it, and they squat, and then they use water out of the sink to uh, clean themselves up, and if you leave toilet paper in, the, in their toilet, they will get their, uh, they'll use that to dry their hands, and you know what happens when a wet man who eats toilet paper. Well, I called the upper deck flight attendant and asked her to get my toilet paper out of my flight bag. To do this, she had to sit in the captain's seat and reach down to the left to get the, the, the roll of toilet paper. Enter Murphy's Law. As she was doing this, a, an alarm bell went off and she bolted upright and her right hand hit the autopilot disconnect switch. The airplane nosed down sharply, which of course created weightlessness throughout the airplane. I came off the toilet seat, along much of the blue water in the old style airplane toilets, along with some of what I had deposited in the blue water. The flight attendant ran from the cockpit screaming. She was later found in a fetal position behind the last row of seats on the upper deck. I pulled up my soiled pants, went into the cockpit, silenced the alarm, and re-engaged the toilet paper. Not the toilet paper. Re-engaged the autopilot. That's right. I didn't do this right Later, with the flight engineer and the first officer safely in their seats, I returned to the toilet with toilet paper, clean clothes, and a plastic bag in my uniform. You're wondering, why did the toilet, why did, why did the person scream? Very simple, what was standing on the, the haji standing on the toilet so much, they tend to break up. And the person had sat down on a broken toilet seat, and under his weight, a crack, under his left um, you know, leg there, had opened up, and his flesh had intruded into the crack. And when he went to get up, the crack closed. Thank you.